visits her every two weeks. And because of the pandemic, she's not been able to get close to her. And oh, we did a video thing yesterday and my sister just did one of these numbers on Kimberly's shoulder and Kimberly just went. And I was like, she had her mask on, of course, but she just, and I was like, oh, that is so precious. That is so sweet. My heart was warmed as if I were there myself. And we'll get to see her in a little bit, but you know, it's just like, that's how Jesus feels when we just cuddle up close to him and just get in right in there, right in there, and just adore him. And he, he just smiles. He's drinking it all in, Mr. Jeff. He's just like, mm, let's not move. <laughs> let's just stay right here. Ah, Hallelujah. Thank you all again for coming. Good to see you. And um, I want to take this opportunity to welcome again to this podium, none other <laughs> None other, but live in the middle, Wayne. Should I put in all of the other middle names? <laughs> I call it one of his middle names is Dumplin. Oh my! <laughs> Hard over <bread. laughs> it. Nesbury. Nesbury. Mango. <laughs> Mango. We could the list goes on and on and on. <laughs> but please welcome with me none other but Reverend, <laughs> he's going to be killing me now, <laughs> Shepherd Wayne Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Just stretch your hands towards him. Lord bless him, Lord God, anoint him for this word that is to come forth. You revealed it to him, so God, we just thank you for what you're going to do. And we are waiting with bated breath to hear every word in Jesus' name. <laughs> Oh Lord, my wife. She is a character, isn't she? <laughs> she needs to be on TV. I already am. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yes, it's that time of the month again. snow and ice and, and cold breeze and all those things but it's a cooler season and what's other week what other term could we call it but winter <laughs> it's not fall because we don't have wheat leaves falling off the of the, the leaves right so of the trees so it can't be fall and it's not spring and it's not summer so it's winter so um but anyway uh so this time of year you you i mowed the lawn what once a week or something like that right in the summer in the summer it's like twice a week, right? So I'm out there mowing and doing my, doing those chores and everything, and that's when it came to me. I was picking some weeds out of the grass and out of out of the uh, um, the planting areas and everything, and and that's when it, the Lord put it on my spirit and said, "Weeds, that's a good one to pray." <laughs> I said, "Oh, I cannot relate to, to to the podium here and 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 to our faith and and our life, right, with Christ." And um, so the title of my uh, of my message today, this morning, is the weeds 
in our lives. All right. All right. So, um, you know, we're always Mr. Um, Jeffries. He knows all about that, right? Even though you may be kind of a weed eater, but <laughs> but um, you know all about those those ugly, yeah. unwanted pests in our garden, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, in our garden and our lawn, and we in our cultivated fields, because you know, Mr. Um, Paul and Paul Cunningham across the street. He has a uh, a farm up in um, well, it's um, it's not it's near Monique. I forget the name of it. Um, but anyway, he has a farm up there. You know, you've always heard him, you know, offering his 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 uh, his product produce. Um, but they are the same in our. But those weeds are the, kind of the same in our lives. Things that we want to cut out and weed out, weed eat out and pull out because it doesn't belong, right? not what we want you know it's ugly and they're not nice you know you know we're we're humans we're carnal man those things will always try to get in our in our spirit in our lives in our daily in our activities right in our daily walk with with, with, with with christ as as christians right no one likes to, no one likes to talk about these weeds right but but some some of those plants have to compete some of those good things in, in us have to compete with those ugly things, those things that we don't want, those unwanted things in us that creep into our lives, right? They take away from the, the new, in, in, so I'm going to talk from, from, a, from, a, from a garden type of uh, aspect, from the, the new garden, the take away from the nutrients that, that the, 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 the grass, the good grass that we don't want to plant or going to grow, or from the plants and, 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 uh, and, and product produce that we want to grow, right? take away from the life and the water and all the things that, 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 so we always pull them out and get rid of them, right? But we don't want to, you know, have to compromise with what we do want and what we don't want, right? right? So, um, so what is a weed? A weed is a plant that causes economic losses or eco eco ecological damage, creates health problems for humans, animals, or is undesirable where, it, where it's growing, right? We always have to be spraying. That's why, you know, the, garden, the farmers have to be spraying for the pests and the weeds and all those things. And we don't really care for that because then they'll get another, another product, product produce and we don't want that. We have to wash them off and want the GMO and, and all those types of things right. because we don't want those. Not even the farmers want those, but that's, that's what we have to deal with, right? So the best, the best strategy for weeds is always prevention, right? Like we've heard the term, prevention is the best cure, right? That's right. So it's best to prevent it than to have to deal with it once it's here. So like, like the work you put into into our garden and our fields, we also to make it fruitful and bountiful, right? We also have to do this, the same work into our spiritual life, our life with Christ, to make it fruitful and bountiful, right? So we have to put work into it. In, in the word, Jesus warned that the soil of our hearts, which is in Jeremiah 3, 12, 31, 12, it says, their souls shall be a water garden. So Jesus warned that the soil of our hearts is the most valuable acreage on planet Earth. Our hearts. In Matthew, I'm not going to pull it right. So it's Matthew 13, 23. But that, but he that receiveth seed into the good ground, this is the good ground. Alright? Let's go to Mark. Let's go to Mark. Oh, they have it here. Okay. Uh, Mark 4, 18 through 19. Did I have that? says, and these are they, Mark 4, 8 and 19, it says, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear, such as those who hear the word, and the cares of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So these things entering into, into the word chokes out the word, right? 
the word is what we want to hold on to, right? But these things choke them out, and they will become unfruitful. Jesus also warned of the choking influence of thorns, three kinds of pesky, prickly weeds that squeeze the life out of fruit-producing seedlings. So the first weed that Jesus warned of, warned of, of, warned us of is the worries of the world, the anxieties of this age. Worries or anxiety means to be drawn in different directions or be distracted. So we, we not faith focus on God and, 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 and the word and our Christian life, our Christian walk. So we get involved and get drawn into the issues and the problems of the life. But you know that Jesus provides for all of our needs, right? He said not to worry. He said, why worry about the, about the, the issues in life? Because look at the lilies of the valleys and the birds of the, of the air. Doesn't he take care of them? They don't care or concern themselves with, how am I going to eat the next? What am I going to eat tomorrow? Right? Or how am I going to grow tomorrow? They just do it because they know Jesus, God, is going to take care of us. He, says, he tells us how we should uh, live our life. Don't be distracted by these things. The second weed Jesus spoke of is the deceitfulness of riches. Wealth is, is deceptive. We, it's a deceptive weed that takes over our lives and chokes out our, out our responsiveness to God. Not wealth in itself, right? Because you know, God wants us to be bountiful, to be prosperous, right? He don't want us to be you know, in the ditches all the time, right? So he wants us to to be prosperous, right? But not wealth, not wealthy. Where the wealth is, is so much wealth, and we focus on the wealth so much that it, it draws us away from what how we're supposed to live and how we're supposed to carry ourselves and what we're supposed to focus on, right? Wealth is a deceptive weed that takes over our lives and chokes out our responsibility to God, as I said not before. Not wealth in itself, but it's the drawing power of its allure. Right. The third we that we that we find hindering fruit hindering fruitfulness fruitfulness is in our lives a desire for the things. Here we find the weed of passionate desire of craving. Oh, I want that. oh that looks so good. That over there, I want to have that beautiful car. Don't I want? And I'm gonna do everything I can to get it. Right. Those are not the things we should be craving for. We should be craving for things of God, the things in our heart that God put in our heart, fellow fellowship with, with Christ, reading the Word, knowing and understanding Him. Because that, that car is going to find the end. It's probably going to cause you to be in debt. It's probably going to break down the side of the road and cause you distress and those type of things where this Word and the walk with Christ will never do that. You know? The cares of this world, the seed of the rich, and the pleasures of this life is, is in themselves may not be innocent, but they draw us off so much of our attention, so much of our time, that little remains of spiritual things. Those things that when we get up every morning, the first thing we do, right? We, we spend time with, with, in, in the Word, spread time in prayer. And that's this communication with our Father, communication with God. Right? That's what he wants us to do. We, we mentioned some time ago about that story, that little saying about how we get up in the morning and we have all those things to do and we get busy and and then at the end we didn't have time. We didn't have time for, for God. We didn't have time to spend time spent with him. And it's so important as Christians yes. to start at the day in, in prayer. So those are things that we need to focus on that we don't want to be drawn away from, taken away from in our lives. So what do weeds do? They choke, they entangle, and they steal. They steal those things that we want to spend, we want to do as Christians in, in, uh, in our life, right? The reading of the word, the prayer, the praying for your fellow man, your sister, your 
brother, your mother, those that you are friends who are maybe ill or maybe distressed for whatever reason, pray for them too. Alright? They may not, not necessarily stop the growth, but they can slow it down to the point that that fruit never ripens. So the fruit that we, what are the fruit that we're talking about? In the Bible, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, right? In Galatians 5, 22 or 23. Those fruits that love. is in us. What are they? Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Wouldn't you want to just, those fruits, wouldn't you want to just ripen and just flourish and just like in our garden, in our garden, I guess it's a garden, we have all that little tree, that um, guava tree that was, 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 was when, we, when we bought the land, it was like this and it was dying and infested and the developer asked, do you want us to just pull it out? And we said, no, 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 we're going to, we're going to work with it, we're going to work with it and get it. Cut out the bad, cut out the old, cut out the bad trunks, and the new growth is coming up, and we worked on those, and did what we could, watered it, put some fertilizer down, and now it's flourishing. And the, the, the guava now is as big as my fist. They're not sweet, but they're big. <laughs> and they, they, they're fruit, they're, they're, they're produced, they're, 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 they're doing what they're supposed to do. They, I heard they're full of vitamin C, yes, and Sandra was reading the other day that it, it, it reduces the, your toll and you read it too that it lowers your lowers your, your blood blood pressure so she'll be getting plenty of those sour guavas <laughs> so yeah so don't we want to have those fruits just grow and develop and ripen in our in our in our hearts because that's what the spirit gives us right that's what the, 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 the life of, of Christianity is all about, those fruits. What we need, need as personal visit, what we do need to help us with that, is a personal visit from the Master Gardener Amen. and his hope to help us develop those fruits, right, and to weed out to remove those those things that that takes us away from that walk with Christ, that walk with Him. Amen. God often urges His people to come out, and through the Bible, Old Testament, in um, in Genesis, I don't know, I don't have it up here, but you know, in Genesis, real quick, in Genesis 12:1, He commands Abraham to come out from among His people. Right? Remember that? Read that? Through, through two angels, he, he implores Lot to flee from Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis 19.12. Even Noah, in receiving instructions about building the ark, is told to come out, that is, to get into the ark and leave the evil society of the time. And that was in Genesis 6.14-18. During Israel's wandering in the wilderness, God directs Moses to leave the dwell dwellings of the wicked in Numbers 16.26. And in Isaiah, Isaiah echoes Jeremiah, Jeremiah in saying, Go forth from Babylon in Isaiah 28, I mean 48 and 20. So again, all of these right here, for five examples, God is telling us to get away, get out, leave those things that's going to take away from your walk, from your relationship, and call you to have those things that goes on in your body that you don't want. You know, you want to be able to love and be polite and be loving to, to, to your fellow man and to just be generous, right? Those things in the spirit. He wants you to do those things. And if, if, if these other things, these weeds in our lives that are pulling us and not allowing us to do those things, then we need to weed them out. We need to hold them out, get rid of them. In Proverbs 24, 30 through 34, it 
says, I pass by the field. And this is, this is the uh, uh, King James Version, and I'm going to read. Well, let's read the King James Version first. I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man, void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well, and I looked up in it, upon it and received instruction. So in the, yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. The English Standard Version, I'll read, I pass by the field of the sluggard, you can go back to the first one, and by the vineyard of the man lacking sense. And behold, it was completely overgrown with thistles. This was the leaves with sharp prickles, right? Its surface was covered with nettles, needles which cause a stinging sensation and a rash. And its stone was stone wall was broken down. Then I saw and, reflect, and reflected upon it, and looked and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little fall of the hands to sleep. Then your poverty will come as a robber, and you want like a common man. So it says, what is that telling us? Don't be asleep, don't slumber. Don't be relaxed. You need to be working to making sure that those weeds, those prickles don't overtake and, and take advantage of your walk, your time, your relationship with Christ. All right? So the lead, the weeds in our lives, the weeds in our life we need to we not really remove, we need to work on so that we can be fruitful. All right? Our Heavenly Father never meant for us to have hardened, weed infested hearts. But because of sin, we are they, they are everywhere. They are not always avoidable. That's sin on this earth, right? They're always going to be around. Even the, 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 the most Christian person is going to be, unless he's in his home, and never going out, and never listening to the radio, and never listen to watching TV, and never encountering with other people, he's gonna, those things are gonna be temptation. temptation, gonna be weeds in his life. And he has to be able to know how to weed them out, know how to focus, not on those, but focus on Christ, right? And keep God and our Christian life is bountiful, just thriving in our, in our lives so we can live that life that God wanted us to live. And just to wrap up, there is one who is more than willing to roll up his sleeves and begin digging into the depths of our hearts, garden. And who would have quit that man, that person be? Christ. All we have to do is call upon him. That's why it's so important for us to pray every day. Pray every day. If we don't pray, we're going to be going in the other direction. That further direction, further and further away from, from Him. Keep focusing on prayer, keep focusing on a relationship, that conversation with our Heavenly Father. Who would not want to? And I know it's hard for a person that's not a Christian that don't know this life to understand and realize why wouldn't you want to have that conversation with that with the God of heaven that has that can do and has done so much for his people? Right? Amen. Sometimes we fall out, fall out, find ourselves in the in the valley. But what 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 do we do when we find ourselves in a valley? We call upon him, right? We get on our knees. Because if he were up here all the time, we probably said, Oh, I don't need God. I'm, I'm doing good, man. That's what the world does, right? They're up there all the time. They're having a great old time, living a wonderful life with all the, everything they want until they get down in the valley. They don't know what to do. 
they don't know who to call upon. And what they do, they end up going into these things, the alcohol and the drugs, and end up in places where they're not supposed to be because they have best they didn't know any other way. They know they didn't know God. They didn't know how to call upon him. They didn't know what to call, who to call. Right? So I'm not saying that we will not be in the valley at times. We will. Right? That's what it is on this earth. Things will happen. Right? But at least we all have that hope in Christ. The hope in God that we can always call upon him and know that he's going to come through for us. That there's a that there is a a a a a light at the end of the tunnel, right? Yeah, yeah. That is such a wonderful thing to know. That he, our heavenly father, the father that can do all things and everything, yes. the almighty God, yes. will come through for it. It's on our side. Mm -hmm. Right? He created us. Just like if when those that have children, you created them, right? You want the best for that child. You want them to be better off in this world, in their life, better than you do, that, that, that your life, right? A, a, a good parent wants that for their children. So why wouldn't you expect that from our Heavenly Father that loves us more so than our earthly father would? So I'm going to leave you with that, to say that keep those weeds out, keep working, keep working, keep hoeing, Keep being bountiful and fruitful with what Christ has put in us when we became Christians. Okay? Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening and, and hope, hopefully that will make a difference in, has made a difference in my life. Because we need to, we need encouragement, right? We need to know that we need to continue. And that's what, that's what going to church is all about, is that you fellowship with others, right? You, they encourage you, and, they, and, 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 and the teaching keeps you focused on where you need to go. It's like college, right? If you didn't go to class every day and say, oh, I'm going to take off a month, you won't be focused on, and we, we, won't, we won't be able to get that prize at the end of that three or four years, right? The same thing with Christianity. you got to stay in the fold, you gotta stay in the fellowship. You gotta stay in the world. Great Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Good job, Minister Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. What what Wait, do you think? Did, did, do you think he um delivered well? Did you get what he was saying? Yeah, that, that's good stuff, you know, and as he said, we we have to study. The Bible says study to show yourself approved unto God, right? A workman that needed not to be ashamed and when we study God's Word we, we can pick out these little things every now and again and say, oh my gosh you know what I need to keep myself um, abreast of this and, and remember what this is saying because weeds you don't have to tell the weeds to <laughs> come into your lawn do you you don't have to say okay weeds, come on up now come on up they're there and you don't even realize that they're coming up right you, you he mowed just recently, and so a couple days later, maybe he'll be like, Didn't I just pull some weeds out? Where, what happened? Where, where did these come from? Right? They come up whether you want them to or not, sometimes overnight. So, as Christians, we just have to watch for that. And we can't really say, Oh, my lawn is nice and <laughs> beautiful. I have no problems. My lawn is just. You know, top of the line. I got a prize for my lawn the other day. <laughs> you know, I got a trophy for my lawn. But if you look closer, there might be just some weeds that are trying, Mr. Jeffrey, to just get in there and do some stuff. So we thank you for that word. And, um, you know, we just have to walk softly before the Lord. Those of us who have given our hearts to him and we're walking that road, just say, Lord, just keep me and help me to to keep my lawn, my life, Lord God, not necessarily free, free of the weeds, but when they come up, that I will be able to nip it in the bud. Ah, you go now. No, another one coming up over there. No, how you doing again? How do you do, Mr. Jeffrey? You do. Or you literally go like this, dig it up from 
Ah, that's another thing. Nice. Some of them you take off, you think you just pull it up like that. No. But guess what happens? You have to go to the root. Jesus. That's another message right there. Ah, you have to go to the root. Because if you don't get the root of it, you cut it off at the top, yeah, at the back. surface, and yeah. it's back. Yeah. And you're like, hold on, didn't I just, uh, where'd that ugly thing come from? That, that terrible thing in my garden, you know? So we do that, and then the fruit will be able to come forth, the beauty of our lives will be able to shine forth in Jesus' name. And it's all through his grace. And um, so we thank God for that word today. Did anybody get anything from that? Can I see a show of hands? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, we're going to close off right now. I don't know if anybody has anything they want to share or any requests or anything like that right now. Um, we will do that too. Anybody has any prayer requests or any, any comments or anything at all? that you would like to share right now. Here's you. So also, I, I think, um, I see Hilda, were you saying you wanted to share something? No. Oh, okay, okay, you moved your head. You have to be careful how you do that. <laughs> when, when that question comes forth, make sure no hand is up. No, no twitching of anything. No, not even any movement of the... <laughs> or your eyes. Okay. All right. So we're going to close out right now. Father, we just thank you so much for your word because your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts both ways. It cuts, Lord God, to, to break away and to remove the weeds. And it also cuts the other way to bring healing after we're, we're, we feel the cutting, Lord Jesus Christ. We just pray to show us, Lord God, the things in our lives the weeds that need to be plucked up from the roots and to be removed from our lives so that the fruit, oh God, the fruit of the Spirit will come forth. Oh Lord Jesus, so that men may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven, you Lord God. So Lord, let this word, Jesus Christ, enter into our very spirits and do the work of the removal of the weeds and Lord God, the planting of the fruit of the Spirit. You said you send your word, O oh Lord God. And Lord Jesus Christ, it would accomplish, Lord Jesus, what you please in the thing that it was sent. So your word this morning has been sent. So let it now take, take, take root in our hearts, Lord God, so that it can bring forth the fruit that you so desire, Lord. Not just us here, but those who might be watching sometime later, God. Somehow, this is your word, God. And your word is not dead. It is alive. Let it accomplish what you please this day. And Father, we will not fail to give you the praise and the glory. We ask that you bless this offering, Lord God, that was brought to this table, God. We ask that you bless the offering first for the ministry, O oh Lord God. This is your work, not our work. This is not for us, but it is for your work. But I ask this morning for a special blessing upon each and every one that, that gave forth, Lord Jesus. I ask for such, such protection over them, Lord God, vision over them, Lord Jesus. Oh God, let the blessings chase after them, Lord Jesus. And if there's any need whatsoever that they have, Lord God, my prayer today is that you would supply that need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus and that they would never, ever lack anything at all. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, nothing will be lacking in their lives, God. And bless their families as well, God. And Father God, we just give you thanks, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. 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 Don't run off. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. Why do you think there is one? I don't know why she thinks there is one.